Howdy folks, welcome to this video sample of layouts from the book Cue Ball Control Cheat Sheets. This is a book on how to apply precise cue ball speeds and spins. About the author, I am Alan P. Sand, a certified instructor qualified by the Professional Billiard Instructors Association. I've written many books on pool skills and knowledge that have helped thousands of players. Instructions. Set up these layouts with paper reinforcement rings, also known as donuts. First, pocket the one ball. From where the cue ball stops, pocket the two ball. Try the shot with the recommended speed and spin. After you own the shot, experiment with your own ideas. Use these layouts to rapidly master precision cue ball shape and position. When you set up a layout, take the time to make sure you can always make the shot work. Cue ball spin, the clock system. The cue ball spins used in the book are very precise. All Q-tip and ball contacts are exactly one Q-tip out from center as shown in this graphic. The clock system helps explain precision cue ball spins. Cue ball speed, the distance system. Speed is the other critical ball control factor. This is the distance that the cue ball will travel based on the energy you put into the stroke. The soft speeds. Soft one speed moves the cue ball from one side of the table to the other side. Soft two speed moves the cue ball cross side and halfway back into the center of the table. Soft 3 speed is a cross side lag shot. The cue ball goes across the table and comes back to the start position. The medium speeds. Medium 1 speed is a standard lag shot. It goes the length of the table and back. Medium 2 speed is the lag shot plus a roll that ends at the table center. Medium 3 speed sends the cue ball three times up and down the table. In this setup, there are several aspects you must have in the forefront of your mind. Number one, identify the perfect line for the one ball into the pocket. Number two, precisely apply the cue tip to the cue ball exactly at 6 o'clock and one Q-tip below center. 3. Use only the exact speed necessary to make the cue ball travel up table. Fortunately, the comfort zone for the two ball is large. That means in a worst case scenario, you'll have a shot as long as you can get the cue ball past the center line. The 6 o'clock draw comes into the rail as running English. This increases the angle out of the rail and easily rolls the cue ball up table. If this path is blocked with interference balls, use a 430 spin with a medium 2 speed. This increases the cue ball's angle out of the rail and sends it into the head rail. Practice both of these until you can play the shot with your eyes closed. Also try the options with a medium 1 speed. All you really need to do is just get past the center line. This layout also requires the cue ball to travel up table to get a shot on the two ball. As you can see from the path, the cue ball has to come off three rails to get all the way up table. This requires greater speed and some side spin. The 1030 spin heads the cue ball forward from the tangent line. The running English doesn't have much effect off the first rail since the angle is so shallow. In the second rail, the running English shows off its effect. The angle out is increased and also increases the up table angle. The cue ball does come into the third rail with reverse spin. This kills some of the energy and allows the cue ball to gently roll into the comfort zone for the two ball. You're welcome to try variations on the cue ball's speed and spin. By the way, this will also work with the 12 o'clock follow. 
When you get down on the shot, spend a few extra seconds lining up the one ball so that it hits the face of the pocket. It won't take much to rattle the pocket and miss the one ball shot. In this situation, the two ball sits right in the middle of the head rail. Its position drastically reduces the comfort zone for the shot. 430 draw on this shot increases the cue ball's running English so that it comes off the first rail. This is what increases the angle so that it goes up further up table. It is this increased angle up table that allows the cue ball to stop well within the comfort zone for the two ball shot. You should also attempt to get the cue ball into the two ball's comfort zone on the right side of the table. This can be done, but requires extraordinary speed and spin to do so. You must also keep in mind that sending an object ball to the pocket with too much speed drastically increases the chances of missing. When that happens, it doesn't matter if you got shape on the next ball. You'll be turning the table over to your opponent while you sit down and watch him. So take some extra time and make sure that the one ball lines up to the pocket exactly into the center of the pocket face. On this layout, the two ball is setting in the middle of the head's rail. There are two comfort zones and both are very small. The 12 o'clock on the cue ball increases the angle in and out from the first rail. It also adds some running English to the spin. On the second rail, the cue ball is able to easily roll into the comfort zone for the two ball on the right side of the table. Natural cue ball roll is the simplest and easy way to play this layout. However, if you're forced by interference balls to try to get into the left side comfort zone, there's only one way to accomplish that. Come into the one ball with 130 reverse spin and medium 3 speed. Because the angle in is shallow, the cushion cannot cancel out the reverse spin, but the angle out will very closely match the angle into the first rail. The reverse spin does take effect on the second rail. The cue ball travels up table to hit the third rail near the side pocket. This sends the cue ball into the two balls comfort zone on the left side of the table. Practice both of these until you're comfortable with the cue ball patterns. Thanks for watching this video about the cue ball control cheat sheets book. Check out the blogs and books and deals on the billiardgods.com website. Good luck and shoot straight.